Hi, fifth grade, and welcome to Ready, Set, Read, Research and Writing. I'm Ms. Turner, and I'll be working with you today on writing your exit ticket letter to the editor based on the superstars of science. So please make sure that you have a pen or a pencil, your week eight distance learning packet, and some scratch paper. Go ahead and meet me where your exit ticket is, and that's where we're going to get started today. I'm so excited to be with you guys. All right, let's read what your exit ticket prompt is today. Today, you will show what you've learned about the process of discovery and the different spectacular scientists and inventions you read about in Superstars of Science through writing. You will learn about the structure of opinion writing and practice developing a thesis statement. This will help you with developing your introduction paragraph in response to your exit ticket prompt. Your exit ticket prompt says, Write a letter to Science Spin Magazine to persuade them to include a featured cover story on one of the scientists from Superstars of Science. Be sure to explain the scientist's process of discovery, their innovation or invention, and their impact on our society using text evidence as support. Wow, you are going to be so creative today. First, let's look at what it might be, what it means to send a letter to a magazine. This is called an op-ed or a letter to the editor. Let's read an example together. This says, Dear Editor, I'm writing to you about the teacher who made a difference contest. Miss Wells made a difference to me. I think she should be the winner of your contest. Miss Wells has done so much for me and for all of her students. This is the least I can do for her. First of all, Miss Wells is helpful. She's willing to help anyone in the classroom who needs help. My teacher always helps us with worksheets. On Friday, she showed me how to do something in math. If you ask her for help, she'll help you. In addition, Miss Wells is a kind person. She always lets her students stay in from recess. On February 26, she let our class have a colonial day. We got to dress up like colonists. It was a blast. Not only is she kind to kids, but she's also kind to other teachers and parents. She is always thoughtful and considerate. Lastly, Miss Wells donates her times to kids. She donates her lunch recess for student council, which meets in her room. And last fall, Miss Wells promised me that she would come to one of my soccer games. Guess what? She did, even though she had a lot of grading that she needed to complete. For all the reasons I have discussed, I think Miss Wells should be the winner of your contest. She is helpful and kind and gives her free time to students. I know you will agree with me that Miss Wells is a teacher who made a difference. She's the best. Sincerely, Melissa Harrison. This is an example of what a letter to the editor looks like. Let's answer some questions about this letter. The first question says, to whom is the letter directed? Where do you include it in the letter? The second question says, what reasons does the author give on why readers should care? What are the key points the author addresses in the letter? Question number four. What does the author hope to get by writing the letter? And finally, question number five, what does the author do at the end of the letter? I'm gonna give you two minutes to think through each of these questions before we come back together.
Great job taking some time to reflect on this letter to the editor. As I was reading through and looking at the first question, it said, to whom is the letter directed? Where do you include it in the letter? Well, I looked right at the top where it said, dear editor. And so I said the letter is directed to the editor of the magazine, and this should be included in the greeting at the very beginning. The next thing says, what reasons does the author give on why readers should care? As I look through, I go into each of the paragraphs. In paragraph two, it says, Miss Wells is helpful. Paragraph three says, Miss Wells is a kind person. And in paragraph four, Miss Wells donates her time to kids. Each of these are reasons that the author gives on why readers should care. And then the author even gives more examples for why the reader should care. So I said, Miss Wells is helpful, kind, and donates her time to kids. Each paragraph had a clear reason why you should care with examples. The next question says, what are the key points the author addresses in the letter? The author addresses the key points for why Miss Wells should be the winner for the teacher who made a difference contest. You can tell that the author of this letter decided that each paragraph should be a reason for why Miss Wells should win the contest. And then they found a specific example that supports why that reason is important. The next question says, what does the author hope to get by writing the letter? Well, it's clear. The author hopes that Miss Wells will win the contest. Every letter or every letter that's written or opinion essay that's written should be clear about what the author thinks. And this one was very clear. Finally, what does the author do at the end of the letter? Well, the author ends the letter by reinforcing the reason they wrote the letter and by including a salutation. A salutation is where it says, sincerely, Melissa Harrison. That lets us know who wrote the letter and that the letter is done. When you write your op-ed or your letter to the editor, you're writing a letter to Science Spin Magazine to persuade them to include a featured cover story on one of the scientists from Superstars of Science. Be sure to explain the scientist process of discovery, their innovation or invention, and their impact on our society using text evidence as support. What you should do when you are writing your letter to the editor, you should address your reader. Who are you writing this letter to? Be sure to include dear at the top. Just like we saw in this letter right here where they said, dear editor, yours can be very similar. Tell the readers upfront why they should care. Explain why this issue is an important one. So look back at the text and think, why does this scientist work matter? Focus your message on one to three key points. You will have more success if your editorial is focused and easy to understand. So again, like we read in our example, they chose a topic sentence where they explained three reasons why Miss Wells should win, and then they explained that by giving specific reasons. Your letter should look very similar. Three key points, one to three key points on why your scientist um, should be a featured cover story. Keep it short, but not too short. Typically, newspapers will accept opt-eds of 500 to 800 words. Magazines may accept slightly larger pieces, but check the publication's requirements before you submit your column. Finally, offer specific recommendations. An op-ed is not a news story that simply describes a situation. It is your opinion about how to improve matters. Make your call to action something concrete and realistic. So for example, you're saying this person should be a cover story and then give them reasons why. Finally, at the end, sign your name or put a salutation. At the end of your letter, be sure to include a closing greeting and your name. Just like we saw with Melissa Harrison, she said, sincerely. You can say, sincerely, you can say, best. Fifth grade, I'm so proud of the way that you've been working as we read through the letter to the editor and reflected on some of the strategies that that author used in their letter. Now, what we're going to do is I'm gonna review the general specific thesis formula with you. 
I'm gonna go through the two options you have for planning, and then I'm gonna give you some time to start planning your very own letter to the editor about which superstar of science should be the featured cover story. So go ahead and meet me on the page of your packet where it includes the general specific thesis formula so we can review that together and continue working on this writing. All right, I'll see you there in just a second. Great job. In addition to using all of these strategies when you're writing, you still want to make sure that you're using the general specific thesis formula when you write. This is something that we have spent a lot of time talking about, but I'm going to review it again. The first sentence should be a general statement. You can see this example in the President's Day example right there. President's Day is a holiday honoring past presidents of the United States. This is general, it lets you know that this is gonna be about President's Day, but now it's time for me to dive in a little deeper in my second sentence with the specific statement. On the third Monday in February, we especially acknowledge two of our greatest presidents. I got a little bit more specific here, and now the reader knows that we're gonna be talking about two specific presidents. Finally, the third sentence is my thesis statement where I say, all Americans should recognize the achievements of George Washington and Abraham Lincoln on President's Day. This is where I stated my claim, and now the rest of the essay is going to be about Americans recognizing the achievements of George Washington and Abraham Lincoln on President's Day. Today, when you're writing your letter to the editor, your thesis statement should be what, what scientists should be the cover story for the science magazine. You should state this in the introduction paragraph and then each of your body paragraphs should support that thesis statement claim. We're now gonna move on to your planning section. As we've talked about in the weeks prior to this, you should be using one of these organizers to plan your essay. Each of these organizers has helpful things. You choose the one that you prefer. On these organizers, you should write your thesis statement, and then you should have three details that support it and support why that particular scientist should be the cover story. Then you will take what you've planned and put it on the lines in paragraph form. Right now, I'm gonna go ahead and give you three minutes to plan using one of these graphic organizers your letter to the editor.
Great job working on your planning. As you were planning through, did you make sure to state your claim in your thesis statement? Do you have body paragraphs that support what you stated in your thesis? And do you have specific examples from the text that explain that thesis and why that scientist should be chosen? Awesome job. Before we're finished today, we're gonna to review the checklist, and then of course I will be sharing a book recommendation with you. So please meet me in your packet on the checklist. When you go from your planning section to the lines today, make sure to include the following things that are listed on the checklist. I will read the checklist now. First, you should state your opinion and use evidence that supports your opinion. You should introduce your topic clearly and write your reasons in order so they make sense to the reader. You should choose specific words and details that would make the reader agree with the reasons that support your opinion. You should write specific facts and details for each reason to support your opinion. You should connect your reasons together with transitions and linking words such as also, another, because, specifically, and consequently. You should write several sentences or a part that concludes your writing. You should write a concluding statement or section that restates your opinion. You should write an ending that makes the reader agree with your opinion. And finally, you should use capital letters correctly when writing your sentences. If you follow all of these as well as the recommendations for writing an op-ed, you're going to have an awesome letter to the editor. Fifth grade, I am so proud of you for all this hard work that you did towards planning and starting to write your letter to the editor today. Please make sure to follow the checklist and the guidelines and recommendations for writing your letter to the editor. I'm sure your teachers can't wait to see which scientist you think should be the cover story for the science magazine. Please make sure to submit your essay or your letter to the editor to your teachers in whichever way they've asked. Um, before we close out, of course, I'm going to share with you another one of my favorite books, and really, this is one of my favorite series of books that I'm sure you've heard of. This is called Goosebumps. This is not a new series for most of you, I'm sure. This specific book is called Goosebumps Most Wanted, and it's written by R.L. Stein, who has been writing these books since I was a kid. Let's go ahead and read about Goosebumps. The villains you want to have, the books you have to read. Jay Gardner can't seem to stay out of trouble. Even after a fresh start in a new neighborhood, he keeps finding himself in bad situations. But it's not his fault. Jay wants to be a good kid. He really does. It's just these strange things keep happening to him. What kind of a place did his family move to? And why does every house have so many lawn gnomes in their yard? Jay better learn quickly that there are things a lot more scary than his parents. Dun, dun, dun. Any of these Goosebumps books is a fun book to read um, and give yourself a little bit of mystery. All right, fifth grade, I had a great time working with you guys today. Um, I'll see you next week for our final week of Ready, Set, Read. Um, please know that all your teachers love you and miss you um, and wish we could be finishing out the year with you. I'll see you next time.